This is John from Clock Repairs Merseyside. I just thought I'd share a short video with you on a French clock that I'm actually working on at the present moment in time. It dates from about 1880. Um, there was absolutely loads of these clocks made. Uh, they all had, uh, you know, the, most of them. Most of them were in black sort, of black marble, uh, slate type cases. Uh, some of them were very, very ornate. Some of them were very large. They're very, very heavy. Very heavy. Uh, this one's in pretty decent shape, to be honest with you. It's, it's been serviced once or twice in its lifetime, I would imagine. Um, but at the present moment in time, as you can see, uh, it's pretty, pretty gummed up. The plates. That's the 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 the, 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 the front plate. This is the back plate. Pretty gummed up. Um, so this is going to be popped in the ultrasonic clean and it's going to be uh, cleaned off uh, and all, all, the, all the old oil and stuff's going to be cleaned off. The springs are going to be popped out the cylinder, they're going to be checked to see if they've set. I mean this is the terminology in a horology for uh, if the spring's no good anymore, knackered in other words. Um, if, if that's the case they obviously will be replaced with new ones which we, we, we're still able to get hold of. But most parts now for, for antique clocks have to be made. We're fortunately enough we we're fortunate enough to, to, to have a workshop where or a couple of workshops where we can cater for this. We can actually uh, you know fabricate and make a lot of a lot of bits and pieces for old antique clocks. Um, that being said, sometimes we rely on obviously we've got a lot we, we, we keep everything we keep all spare parts we, we often buy clocks in just for, for for scrap purposes really to salvage parts um this is something you know seems to be what i'm doing all the time actually buying bits and pieces up uh, just in case i ever need it and then if you ever throw anything away i find that i need it the next week um this clock will be uh, reassembled any repairs done that it needs doing will be done it'll be reassembled Relubricated and then left running for a period of time, obviously to make sure that it keeps good time and it's running right and striking right, and so on. Um, this is what we do to every single clock that comes into us. Um, we, 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 you know, we, we, we don't just oil them and and send them back out to people. I mean, this is a recipe for disaster. I mean, you know, you'd probably get away with doing that on a lot of clocks, really. But you know, for us, it's it's just not right. It doesn't feel right. We've not been I, well. I've not been taught that way. Um, I, my uncle's the one who taught me. He's now 91 years of age. Um, there's a clock striking in the background there. Um, yeah, I mean that's 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 pretty much the procedure with most clocks. Uh, take them to pieces, clean them, lubricate them, do any repairs, i.e. bushing and stuff like that. Fortunate enough for French clocks, they don't they very often don't need bushing. Uh, very very rare. Um, it's it's mainly springs and mainly a clean. Um, they do sometimes have striking problems. Uh, this is due to, to, to sort of parts worn uh, on, on the front end of the clock, you know, as, as the strike operates and stuff like that, you know, gathering pallets and things like that, that, that they tend to wear a lot easier on French clocks than they do on old English clocks. Um, but yeah, all in all, I mean, yeah, quite a nice movement. So I'm pretty confident it'll be successful. I think I'll put another video up of the movement finished. Uh, and what it looks like um, yeah we could do that maybe a few maybe do a few of these videos uh, if there's any interest I think I think I think we're going to eventually uh, when I get time and me, I've got my grandson working with me now uh, so he's sort of like about fourth generation down now uh, I think he's going to be able to help me out a lot so he'll probably help me out doing some videos on uh, on YouTube and that which I'm sure will be of interest to to, to a lot of people um, as I say, it'll be of the more interesting uh, clocks we get in, which thankfully we, we, you know, that's that seems to be the case most of the time. I mean, the good thing about antique clocks is is that a lot of them are very, very different, uh, and especially when you go to the older grandfather clocks. I mean, very individual. Um, you know, a lot of them you can still see uh, the the marks where where the the clockmaker has made them, because a lot of them were were made by hand. You know, probably about 75% of it was made by hand. I mean, obviously, they buy a few bits and pieces in. But, um, and then as we, we got on to, sort of, say, 1820s, sort of, you know, the, the white dial grandfather clocks, I mean, 
they you know a lot of parts were fabricated uh, in order to make the job probably a bit easier for the clock making for him able for him to make a few more clocks per year um this is what I'm led to believe anyway a lot of, a lot a lot of spits and pieces style plates and things made in Birmingham but I'll leave a lot of that for another video uh which we can put on Facebook and we can put on YouTube and you know maybe gain a bit of interest in uh, or or generate a bit of interest in horology uh in clock making clock repairs because it's an industry that certainly needs it thanks very much Bye-bye.